a steam plant using Cotswold Heritage components. This one is part three, planning the component layout on the boiler plant baseboard and cutting the copper tube for a condenser and water tank. I was pleased to find this thicker than normal copper tubing, which will be ideal to make the water tank and condenser combination. I knew the bonus is, as this is thick copper tubing, it can go straight into the four-jaw self-centering chuck in my smart and brown lathe, and I can turn the ends of the tubes to square them up and make them the same length, without having to fit a piece of steel bar to hold the part rigid in the chuck. I'm doing a lot of things wrong here, and why is that? Because it's a tutorial. The lathe is running a little bit fast, and there isn't much lubrication of the work. It's a negative rake tool, and it's not particularly sharp. And as you can see, it cuts sporadically. I often do things this way. I find it a very useful way to teach beginners how not to do the job. It's easier if I make the mistakes rather than the person who's a beginner to lathe work. I cut at this speed and this depth with a negative rake tool on a piece of thin wall copper tubing would really be the end of it. As I've just mentioned, normally I would turn a mandrel on which to fit the piece of copper tube if it was thin. Then the whole assembly would be clamped in this four-jaw self-centering chuck to hold everything rigid. But in this clip, for the first time ever, I do not need to support the copper other than in the chuck jaws. I did try a squirt of metal cutting lubricant, but it soon disappeared. So I thought, no, I'll just cut it dry, it'll be okay. I neglected to mention that I cut the piece of tubing, because it was much longer than this, using my bandsaw. And as my bandsaw didn't really cut the tubing as square as I would have liked it to have done, that's why I needed to true up the ends. After the turning operation, the ends of these tubes were quite badly burred. I used a hand deburring tool for the inside, and just used my one inch belt sander to clean up the outside. I finished the cleanup operation by rubbing the ends of the pieces of tubing on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper on the bench like this. These pieces of copper tubing are going to be painted and it's no good painting a surface like this. I need to do something about that so it's back over to the lathe and with each of the two copper tubes I cleaned them up like this. A health and safety warning, be very careful when using emery cloth in the lathe. Always pull away from the lathe, never put it on top of the work and push down, and hold the ends of the emery cloth lightly, so if it does catch up, it will drag it out of your hand and will not drag your hand into the chuck. Never wrap it round your fingers under any circumstances. In this clip that you've just seen, one of my hands seemed to be quite close to the chuck, but in reality my hand was quite a long way from the chuck. It was just the camera angle. Exactly the same procedure now on the second piece. Halfway out of the chuck, clean up one half like this. And once you're happy with that, turn the part around in the chuck to do the other end. This is just the first stage of the cleanup. I will need to drill some holes in these pieces of tube and thread them. Then I will need to soft solder both of these tubes onto a common bed plate. There will be quite a lot more sanding going on before I get round to painting them. The whole point of doing this is not just to make the tubing look nice, it's to scratch the surface to give a key for the paint. I'd better mention at this stage, what I'm supposed to be doing today is cleaning up copper piping and replacing some of the union nuts. I find the manual cleaning of thin copper piping to be very tedious. And here are the last two pieces of piping that have just started cleaning. I'd like to show an excerpt from a video I made a few years ago. This is exactly the same principle. I made a condenser and a water tank on the same bed plate. And although this copper tubing has a much thinner wall, the principle is the same. If you mount the water tank and the condenser on a common bed plate, the heat from the condensed steam in the condenser warms up the bed plate, which in turn warms up the water in the water tank. Well, that's the idea anyway. This was a steam plant I put together a few years ago and you can see the condenser water tank unit behind the central engine. And it worked very well. Decisions, decisions. Where and how to mount the components. Well, I'm going to mount the water pump and the boiler itself in their original positions. But instead of the gas tank, 
In its place is going to be my twin condenser water tank unit. I will turn matching aluminium caps, the same as the boiler, for the water tank and the condenser. Here I'm wondering whether it would be a good idea to turn the boiler around the other way. I thought I would try a few permutations, not necessarily based on common sense. Some of these permutations are a bit impractical, but it gives me some idea of how it's going to look. It soon became apparent which was the most logical arrangement, and here it is. The finished steam plant will use an external commercial gas canister, and by careful arrangement of the components on the board, the whole thing will end up being very compact and quite small. Quite unlike this steam plant that are built to a customer's specifications. It was absolutely huge. The question I ask is, when you're not playing with it, where do you put it? And bear in mind, how difficult is this going to be to clean? I really am not into pointlessly large steam plants. I actually bought a large Stuart Twin Victoria steam plant from this customer and ended up cutting it in half. When I go to look at full-size steam engines, I never seem to see the boiler right next to the steam engine. It's usually in another room. It's a throwback to the small toy steam engines where everything's mounted on a base plate. I recently bought a Willesco D20, and that's about as big as I like them to be if they're going to be all on one board. In an attempt to save electricity, I thought, what about using a steam generator? And believe it or not, I get many messages from people who are obviously not quite on my wavelength, telling me that they want to use a steam engine to power a generator so they can make their own electricity. I generally don't even bother replying, and when I do I say, it's wholly impractical, work it out. Steam engines and steam boilers, whether they're coal-fired or gas-fired or whatever, need attention. But the people who are writing in asking me these questions just don't have any concept of this. I'm going to use a steam turbine running on compressed air using a compressor to provide the compressed air. And here's the demonstration. Time elapsed and eventually darkness arrived and as I turned off the video lights it was even darker. Is this going to be the answer to the energy crisis? I sent some air to the turbine and the bulb started to glow. Then I turned the pressure up and it started to glow even brighter. And then, even brighter still. This turbine is connected to a 50 litre tank, which was full of air when I started, and already the compressor's kicked in to pump it up again. And the compressor that I have is not massive, but it's not small either. It uses two fridge type compressors on a 50 litre tank. This turbine would be much better using steam because it's denser, but then I would need a boiler, quite a large boiler in fact, capable of giving out a high steam volume, with a suitable fuel source and some way of topping up the boiler, because don't forget you don't get anything for nothing, so as your turbine evaporates the water in the boiler, the water level drops, you have to pump some water into the boiler, then the pressure drops. And all this, just a light, one three volt light bulb. You can hear when the pressure in the compressor starts to drop. This is wholly impractical, but good fun. So please viewers, unless you're one of my Patreon supporters, don't write in asking for advice on steam engines and generators. I just don't have the time to answer the barrage of questions I get on a daily basis. And that is it. My light bulb has gone out. And as you can hear, the compressor is compressing the air again. All I have to say now is stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.